thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, thank my friend from Kansas for yielding, and uh, especially having Julia Letlow, our colleague here. It's, it's bittersweet for us in the Louisiana delegation, for, for all of us in Congress, those of us who knew Luke, uh, and I got to know him so well over so many years, uh, to those who didn't know him but were getting ready to serve with him. Uh, literally passed away days before getting sworn in after being elected as a member of Congress. But it's, it's Luke's journey, it's Luke's story that we're here to celebrate today and ultimately which will live on at the Luke Letlow Post Office in Rayville, his, his hometown. He was born in Start, Louisiana, in Richland Parish, and it's there in Richland Parish that this post office that we're dedicating uh, is, is uh, hopefully going to be uh, enjoying a formal ceremony with all of us and, and the whole family. Uh, but uh, when, when I think of how I first met Luke, it was when he was working for Bobby Jindal. And as, uh, as Julia said so eloquently, Luke, uh, Luke's whole life was dedicated to public service. When, when he graduated, he immediately was an intern for, Sen for Congressman Cooksey and came up here and I think probably got the bug a little bit, but, uh, but ultimately got the bug to serve other people. And Luke did it so well. He served other people with joy uh, in so many different roles. After he worked for Congressman Cooksey, he then worked for candidate Bobby Jindal. That's when I got to know him. And uh, no harder worker than Luke Letlow, but also uh, no happier person. He was always happy, always had a smile, always just wanted to uh, do the best he could when the day was Luke's was Luke's term, and, uh, and he would just uh, work incredibly hard for whoever he worked for. Bobby ultimately won that seat in Congress, and Luke became his district director. And the district director is the person who covers the district, does so many of the, the, the unheralded things uh, that, that those of us members of Congress uh, deal with and the people that call us, and we just call our district director and say, can you take care of this, and can you see if we can help that person out? And, uh, and that was really where Luke thrived the most. Uh, and then ultimately, he went into the private sector, but was called back yet again uh, when Ralph Abraham ran for Congress, and Luke served as his chief of staff. And uh, Ralph had set a term limit on himself. And when the term limit hit, Ralph stepped down from Congress. And at that point, that's when Luke made the decision Here's my moment. Do I do I do this? And, and ultimately, he decided to run. I remember he and I spoke when he chose to get into the race as a candidate. And I knew he was going to do well. I, I could just tell because he was a natural. He, he was a natural with people. He actually cared about people. And, and it's hard to, to be in this line of work without caring about people. But he had done it in so many other roles for so many other people. Uh, and finally, when it was time to run himself, he, uh, he did it with the fervor that you would expect. He never slowed down every single day. He worked so hard. Uh, I know uh, for those of us who have gotten to know Julia so well, um, the family is what always came first to Luke. And he wanted to be known really first as a, as a husband and a father. And, and he did both of those jobs incredibly well, exceeded, uh, I'm sure, what, what anybody would have expected. But the legacy that I think we all really remember of Luke here is that of a public servant. When you hear all of the things that he did in his life, he was somebody who just wanted to serve other people, and he did it so well. Uh, I think the, the, the hardest part for me is after he had gotten elected, we talked a lot because he was so eager to get ready for this new role, this new career, to come up to Congress and do something that he had thought about doing for so long, a role he had played helping so many other people who served in Congress, but now this was the time where he was going to start his new career. And he, he was talking about what committees he wanted to get on. And, and in fact, you know, in the days before he passed, the last conversation I had with him uh, was about him talking to me about what committees he wanted to be on and how he wanted to best serve that district 
and all of the parishes. It was a very large, sprawling district, and yet he, he couldn't wait to, to serve in that capacity. And, and that was the conversation that we had. And you, you never thought someone so young and so vibrant could leave us so early. Um, I tell you, you know, for, for Julia, it, it's, it's, we're all so proud of you and just the strength that you've shown in, in these years since. We call Julia our steel magnolia because she, uh, she has represented the family incredibly well and she's represented Luke's legacy incredibly well because while he never got the opportunity to serve himself as a member of Congress, he served. He served the state of Louisiana. He served the United States of America in so many different roles. And uh, I consider him a colleague because we, we talked about what that would be like so much. And uh, I, I just think this is a, one way we can pay tribute to Luke's legacy of service, to, to name this post office so that people, when they're carrying out their daily chores and going to check their mail or send an important note to somebody, they can just look up and think about what Luke meant and, and what they meant to Luke because he really did care about the people that ultimately he worked for and that he was going to represent in Congress. So uh, with that, uh, I think on behalf of the whole delegation and I know others are going to be speaking as well, uh, but the legacy of, of Luke Letlow will shine on for a long, long time, but it's, it's, it's what he represented in that spirit, that just strong, positive energy every single day to win the day is what I will always remember about Luke Letlow. And so I urge all of my colleagues to pass this bill and uh, look forward to that ceremony where we get to truly uh, be in front of the whole family, paying tribute to a man who, who lived a life of public service. With that, Mr. Speaker, I yield back.